Hi, my name is Todd Horton. I'm here to talk about how survey grade GPS works. GPS, the term we so commonly use here in the United States, stands for Global Positioning System. Well, that's simply a more specific name for a general term, and that is GNSS, which is Global Navigation Satellite System. There are multiple global navigation satellite systems around the world. In the terms GNSS and GPS, we see the words navigating and positioning. And for our purposes here, we'll consider them synonymous. While the satellites are orbiting, they are at known positions. Known positions relative to the Earth mass center. So our task is to measure from known positions to an unknown position where you are with your receiver on the surface of the Earth. Well, how do we do that? Well, each satellite is an orbiting radio station. So using radio signals we can measure distance from known points at the satellites to an unknown point at your receiver. Once we have that information, your receiver then can calculate a latitude, longitude, and ellipsoidal height, or an XYZ coordinate relative to the Earth mass center. Well, there are multiple global navigation satellite systems. The one we are used to hearing about here in the United States is the Navstar GPS system. The Russian system we refer to as GLONASS. The European system is called Galileo. And the Chinese system is known as Beidou. Both Galileo and Beidou are not fully operational yet as they are still launching satellites. The global positioning system has three primary segments. The space segment, the control segment, and the user segment. We'll spend a good bit of time here now talking about the space segment. As we said before, each satellite is an orbiting radio transmitter. The satellite does not know where you are. It is only a transmitter. It cannot receive any signals from your receiver and thus your receiver is only that, a receiver. In the GPS system in the United States there are 32 satellites that as they orbit they continuously broadcast a data stream. Those satellites are distributed in six orbital planes that cross the equator at an angle of 55 degrees. Now think about this for a moment. Because they cross the equator at 55 degrees, then none of them cross directly over the poles. Their average altitude is about 12,500 miles or just a little bit more than 20,000 kilometers. That's an average altitude. The orbits are near circular, but yes, they are still somewhat elliptical. Each satellite goes around the Earth twice every day. There is a type of time called sidereal time. and The type of time that you and I live in is solar time. So each satellite will reappear at the same place in the sky in 11 hours and 58 minutes. But that is considered one half of a sidereal day. So here you see a view of the Earth spinning and the satellites orbiting. Please note right now that the Earth is spinning but the orbital planes do not spin with it. 
therefore, the satellites will not appear to be tracking across the sky in a uniform formation. The, the blue uh, semicircle that you see moving around the globe would be an area in which you can see the satellites that are highlighted in black. Notice the, the number of visible satellites is constantly changing. Their ground tracks appear on a map like this as a sine wave. Let's look at a little more local example of this. This is a sky plot put out by Trimble Software, and we're going to demonstrate this for you in a little bit. Notice that, as we said, the satellites don't appear to be moving across the sky in a uniform formation. In fact, they follow the ground tracks that you see highlighted in green right there. The Trimble.com GNSS Planning Online utility allows you to select your location. So let's do just exactly that. We'll zoom in here on Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois and select our position. Well that gives us a latitude and longitude and we'll accept the approximate height. We'll select today's date and we will apply that and now that gives me a sky plot and let me help you understand this sky plot starts at 6 a.m. and shows the motion of the satellites throughout the day in 10 minute increments so you can see that these satellites rise and set so throughout the day, the number of satellites is changing and their positions in the sky are constantly evolving. If we go back and turn on other satellites, then we can revisit the sky plot and see that when we use GLONASS satellites, there are more satellites visible. Notice that this is a sky plot with the middle of the plot being directly overhead. The top of the plot where it says zero degrees is north. 90 and 270 are east and west and 180 is south. So notice that in the northern part of the sky there are no satellites visible near the horizon but they are visible overhead when we are in Champaign, Illinois. The GPS control segment consists of five stations scattered across the globe for the purpose of tracking the satellites, updating their orbiting positions, and calibrating and synchronizing their clocks. These are the only locations that can send data to the satellites. Well, you and I are the user segment of the GPS system. GPS receiver accuracies vary with the intended use. Recreational grade receivers usually have a large error, that is they are less accurate. Equipment that is designed for surveying or for precision agriculture usually has a very small error, that is it has much greater accuracy. In summary, we can say that GNSS, more specifically the GPS constellation in the United States, has three elements. The space segment, the ground segment, and the user segment. This general model as well applies to the other GNSS uh, constellations. Each satellite really is just an orbiting radio transmitter. In the following parts of this presentation, we will talk in greater detail about how the satellites work.